He, he, ho, um. You think the goblins were tough. Well, you've never seen the wrath of the hobgoblin. What the hell is a hobgoblin? So, a hobgoblin is a goblin, but you put hob in front of the name. Nah, I'm just kidding. Hobgoblins are... Hitting my table here. Hobgoblins are uh, cousins to goblins. They are much larger, much smarter, and way more organized. So, the way hobgoblins work is they're six and a half feet tall. So, they're already, you know, two, two and a half feet taller than normal goblins. Um, they have typically, depending upon the edition, they could have twice as many hit points as normal goblins. Um, they... Uh, range from like yellowish, dark, like reddish, orangish in their skin tones, and they have long, like brown, yellowed teeth, and they're just kind of nasty looking. They have long fingernails, um, kind of claws at the end of it. Um, one thing you will notice about hobgoblins, though, is almost universally, any clothing that they wear is reddish in color, and any leather that they have is usually stained black. And it's just kind of a, a universal color scheme for hobgoblins. You can change it up depending upon if you want there to be different tribes in your world or whatever. That's up to you. Um, one thing to also note is their weapons and shields and armor is immaculately kept. They will polish their armor. They will repair their armor. Same thing with their weapons. They make sure that this is in good working order. Um, and this tr segues into what they're like. And it's... They're very militaristic. Um, they have sound tactics. They will attack, you know, in formations and actually use strategy in battles. And it's because they're intent on war. War is their life. War is what they do. They're not so much the scrounging survivors as they are the military machine, which is kind of a large step away from their goblin counterparts. Um, and you can see it in the weapons that they use. Hobgoblins can a lot of times be found with halberds or um, gisarms or glaives, um, morning stars, swords and bows, spears. Um, they'll do shield walls. They'll do different tactics. And the cool thing to note about hobgoblins as well is they can fight in light or darkness. They don't give a crap. They can, you can encounter them anywhere. And they do have the, um, the dark vision of their... Uh, cousins to goblins and you know basically the dark vision varies upon what edition you're going to be using um so what's their society like um they're very organized in their tribal bands kind of like the normal goblins they have a very rigid structure of hierarchy based on merit essentially so like if you beat up the boss you're the boss now that's just how it works um they do um uh, meet with other tribes every once in a while and if they do there's a slight chance a fight will break out um, but more often than not they just yell at each other hobgoblin tribes typically don't get along very well um, each tribe which is kind of cool has their own battle standard which is carried by the top ranking officer or the top ranking um, head honcho in their military. So if the chief himself is going out into a battle, he's carrying the battle standard. If one of the sub-chiefs is in the battle and the chief is back at the village or whatever, the sub-chief is carrying the battle standard. But each tribe has their own battle standard. And this is kind of cool because it, you can use it as a DM to create a mini war if you want to in your campaign between the hobgoblins. And maybe there's crossfire for villages are caught in between it and stuff. It really makes for some interesting uh, counterplay and play with your hobgoblins. Um, 80% of all hobgoblin layers are subterranean complexes. These guys are underground. They will hunker down. They're even, they're almost on par with dwarves as far as knowing how underground works or gnomes, how underground works. They may not have the craftsmanship of dwarves and the ability to cut stone like dwarves, but they are very, very um, good underground, I guess, with living under there and 
knowing how to function. Um, if they are above ground, typically they will have a fortified village and there will be a ditch all the way around it or a moat, a fence, a couple of gates, guard towers. Um, they're built upon ruined humanoid settlements a lot of the times. Um, they can incorporate uh, defensive structures. So you may, if um, you are trying to attack a hobgoblin village, you may encounter ha catapults, you know, heavy catapults, light catapults, ballistas. Um, underground complexes, typically they um, use the fauna of the region, the carnivorous fauna of the region. So, for example, if you're facing, like, jungle hobgoblins, you might find carnivorous apes or, you know, something of the like underground, some monstrous humanoid that they're using to guard the entrances. And usually that's through a symbiotic relationship. Um, hobgoblins feel superior to goblins and even to orcs and can act as uh, leaders for them. Um, and usually if they are, um, the goblins themselves are going to be used as cannon fodder for the hobgoblin front line, which basically means... Um, you know, if, if goblins are working for hobgoblins, the goblins are going to just die in droves of the hobgoblins coming afterwards and kind of clean up everything. They're very smart tactically. Um, one of the last things to note about hobgoblins is it's um, not unheard of for hobgoblins to be hired out uh, to powerful or rich evil humanoids. So like an evil wizard or an evil noble um, a lot of times might have their hands in a hobgoblin tribe maybe supplying weapons or money, and they can even be working for humanoids, which is kind of interesting. Um, so goblins are underneath hobgoblins, and hobgoblins a lot of times are bosses of goblins. You know, it, it can happen that way. Who's bigger than hobgoblins?